How's it going everyone? David from DoD Media. Today we're having a look at Premiere Pro's pretty amazing automatic caption generator. It works by taking an audio sample that's on your timeline, uploading it to the cloud, and having a machine learning transcription process, transcribe it, and then create captions out of it. And I've used it for a couple of projects already, and it has dramatically decreased the amount of time I spend making subtitles for videos. So I'm gonna show you exactly how that works. First of all though, we're gonna record an audio sample because we need something for it to translate. This morning I woke up at 7 a.m., I had a bowl of cereal, and then I went to work. Everything went as it should. Let's try a few different accents just to see if it struggles with accents. This morning I woke up at 7 a.m., I had a bowl of cereal, and then I went to work. Everything went exactly as it should. This morning I woke up at 7 a.m. I had a bowl of cereal and then I went to work. Everything happened exactly as it should. This morning I woke up at 7 a.m. I had a bowl of cereal and then I went to work. Everything happened exactly as it should. <laughs> this morning I woke up at 7 a.m. I had a bowl of cereal, and then I went to work. Everything happened exactly as it should. What other ones can I do that? I feel like that's kind of reaching the limit of what I can do without starting to sound a bit racist. So let's throw these into Premiere Pro and see what they can do with it. All right, dump in our audio file. Let's put that onto the timeline. Let's just give it a little bit of a gain. What do we got? Nine, let's boost it by nine. This morning I woke up at 7 a.m. I had a bowl of cereal. Cool. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna hit Control T. It's gonna create a new text layer. Now, if we look at the Essential Graphics panel, you can see there, it's just a blank text layer. Great, there's probably a different way to get to this, but this is the way that I've found to do it, and it's pretty quick. So you just double click that item on your timeline, and it'll bring up this text window. Now, in the text window, you've got three tabs. You've got transcript, captions, and graphics. Now graphics, this counts as a graphic element, this thing here on the timeline, this action on the timeline. It's a graphic element. What we wanna do is come along to captions. Now captions is a new tab in CC 2022, which if you don't have, get it because it's awesome. And what we can do here is transcribe a sequence, create a new caption track, or if we have an SRV file or, or a different kind of subtitle file, or closed captions file, then you can bring that in and then provide it's formatted the right way with the correct punctuation and spacing with time codes and stuff, then you'll be able to import that directly into Premiere and use it as a closed captions source. So what I wanna do is transcribe a sequence. So here we've got a transcript, which is gonna be based off of this timeline. Now, I only have one audio track, so that's fine. I'll just do a mix. All right, I spoke in English, so the language is gonna be English, but here are all the services that they offer, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and transcribe. So it's going to send my audio file up to the cloud, transcribe it, and then send it back down with basically sentences and time codes to match the audio file down here. Pretty amazing. And there we are, it took about a minute. So now we have these sections. So the very first thing you should do is proofread it, right? make sure that it actually says what it says. Go through it, make sure that there have been no mistranscriptions. Um, this morning, woke up at 7 a.m., had a bowl of cereal, then I went to work, everything went as it should. Okay, it hasn't missed a single word. I mean, my, my accents are terrible. Like, they're better than some people's, but they're, they don't sound a thing like South African or Australian um, or Northern or Southern English. Um, so, so really, it's quite cool that it did get that, because if this is using machine learning, then it'll be using machine learning based on the genuine accents, not on my cheap imitations of them. Okay, so, so that's brilliant. I'm happy with that. You can drop down these three dots, and this gives you plenty of options. You can export this as a CSV file or a text file. Uh, you can display pauses as punctuation, so that's cool. Um, and if you're not entirely happy with how the transcript went, then you can retranscribe it. Presumably it will take another pass at it and try stuff slightly differently, not just repeat exactly what it got the first time. Machine learning. All right, so I'm happy with this, so I'm gonna go ahead and create the captions. 
I'm going to create from a sequence transcript like we just had there. Now I could go ahead and create a preset with this so that it is something I can use in the future. I'm not going to bother because it's so easy to adjust that then in the essential graphics panel. Uh, same with you know using a style. So here's where it is a little bit more finickety and this is worth thinking about for your video. Maximum length in characters. Now I, I've found that 42 characters roughly gives me enough wordage on the screen um, and three seconds minimum duration for each subtitle line tends to be the the sweet spot I've found for for subtitles. Um, I don't like to have double lines. I like my subtitles single lines, but I know that some clients will request double lines. Um, so you may just have to do that. But personally, I prefer single lines and I prefer my subtitles to be quite inobtrusive. So let's go ahead and create these. It's going to create the captions. And then you'll see up here, it's created a subtitle track, which is separate from the rest of the video tracks. And it's on top so that it always features on top of everything. You're not going to accidentally put like an image or a mask in front of it. So that's lovely. Now I can close that little panel and do the rest of my edits here within the Essential Graphics tab. So I can come here and I say this morning I woke up at, I could choose, I don't know, let's choose um, Ariel, Ariel. Cool, let's go for Ariel Bold. Nice, that's nice. 48, let's go 45. Yeah, love it. Now you see, it's only affecting the one because I haven't pushed that to that master style that it's created. So I'm going to go back to this one that I've changed, which is the Ariel one. And this little arrow here, I'm just gonna push that track, all captions on track. Cool. And now they're all Ariel Bold. I can get rid of this little um, graphic that I had created it with in the first place. And there we go. It's that easy. This is, I mean, it's taken something that would have required me to listen to it, type it out, pause it several times, rewind, type it out again, play it at slower speeds. Sometimes if you're doing an interview where the person really stammers and stutters, it's just such a pain in the arse. You have to keep going back and, and, and try and get their sentence as they said it. And then you have to spend the time chopping that into segments to be able to put them into individual graphics. It's just, or, or you can just work with timelines and that is equally frustrating and long. So really this is quite incredible. Um, it's not perfect, definitely gets some things wrong sometimes, but overall you save so much time doing it this way and then just tweaking the mistakes than having to do the entire transcript and the entire subtitling yourself from scratch. So kudos Premiere Pro. All right, that's it for me. It was a short one. I'd like to apologize to all the Australians, all the South Africans, all the Southerns, all the Northerns of Britain for my bastardization of your beautiful accents. My, my apologies. All right, give it a thumbs up if you like this video. Hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.